the March 14th, 2024 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thank you everyone for coming tonight. Lori, would you please call the roll? Yep. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Sangster? Sangster here. Weissar? Weissar here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Prinzing? Prinzing here. Gray here. All right, we have minutes from the February 8th meeting. Hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to review them. Can I entertain a motion to approve? Tidings, motion to approve. Knauer second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Um, Doug, you want to uh, go through our tabled? Oh, let me first make an announcement. Um, If you've not been to the Penfield Planning Board uh, meeting before the process, um, we have a public hearing that starts at seven o'clock. Um, and if we finish in a work session prior to that, if we finish all the items in the work session, we'll move right into the public hearing, uh, but no later than seven o'clock. If we're not done with the work session items, then we'll pause those and go into the public hearing. So with that, Doug. All right. Let's uh, roll. Tabled application number one, uh, 1676 Penfield Road, the Flower City Arcade. Um, at this time, uh, we have nothing new for the board to review, uh, so no action is necessary on that application. Okay. Uh, application number two, uh, the Wellsbrook subdivision at 1345 Shoecraft Row. Uh, at the last meeting on February 8th, the board concluded CICRA, uh, adopted a negative declaration, and uh, made a motion for the chairman to sign the uh, part two and three EAF. Uh, a draft approval resolution has been completed with conditions um, for your review, yeah. and it's up to a vote of the board. Yep. Right. Um, I know we've had uh, gone back and forth with the approval resolution. Um, I have. I think at this point, I think, um, you know, I'm satisfied with the resolution. Okay. Staff is uh, good with uh, where everything stands? Yes. Yep. All right. Okay. So given that, I will uh, move that we um, approve the um, resolution. We have a second. second. Yes. Okay. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. Okay. Uh, tabled application number three, uh, the YMCA at 1835 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Uh, we had a sketch plan application back in February. Um, the board tabled that pending uh, drafting a sketch letter to outline uh, your concerns uh, and the public's concerns with the application. Uh, draft sketch letter has been uh, circulated, uh, so we're just looking for a motion on that. Yeah, uh, somebody want to entertain, move to send that? Sure, I, uh, I'll move that we uh, send the sketch letter. Unless Second. It's, okay. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right, and then we have one administrative item, um, 945 and 947 Panorama Trail South. Uh, it's a re-subdivision lot merge. Um, so back ooh, a number of years ago, uh, we looked at a subdivision um, as part of a piece of property on Panorama Trail. Um, subsequent to that, uh, there was a development that occurred just across the town line in Pittsford. Uh, it's where the police <coughs> substation is now and there's a few other office buildings back there. Uh, they had about a 10 foot strip that was within the town of Penfield. Um, the property owner at 945 is interested in picking that up and merging it into his property. Um, staff has reviewed the resubdivision and the merge and we have no issues with it. That's the custom van. Yes, it's so he has right. the vacant lot next to it. Um, 
the we looked at merging the vacant lot with the um, the custom van shop uh, as part of it in like 2016 2015 um, this would just be the vacant lot and the little strip at this time okay sounds pretty straightforward it Any is at some point they may come back in I believe the approval has expired for the merging of the <coughs> business and the vacant lot they'd have to come back in for that uh, but for these these two smaller properties, uh, we don't foresee any issue. Okay. Any Good issues with, with you two? No. no. All right. I'll make a motion. Tidings to approve. Yeah, I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. That was all the uh, work session items I had. All right. We are done with our work session. Uh, we will move immediately into the public hearing portion of the evening. We have one application tonight. Again, if you're not familiar with the process here in Penfield, the, uh, the way it works is the applicant will present their proposed project to the planning board. We will then ask uh, whatever questions we have at the moment, uh, reserving the right to ask more later. Um, and then once we're done with that, we'll open it up to the audience and those countless uh, millions watching from home and around the world um, on the web and on all the numerous streaming services that uh, Penfield TV uh, streams on. So if you are here, uh, just you know, raise your hand if you want to make a comment, and if you are remote and would like to call in, you can call the town hall at 585, country code 1, so 1-585-340-8771. Um, you can also alternatively visit the Town of Penfield website at www.penfield.org. There should be a link to this meeting on the home page and you can submit your comments electronically. So with that, Doug, would you please read the uh, public hearing agenda item? Yes, uh, Marquez and Associates PC, 930 East Avenue, Suite 1000, Rochester, New York, 14607. On behalf of Vanessa Komarek, uh, cite the requesting under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 .2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan approval for the construction of a parking lot on 0 0.633 acres located at 2324 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, Fairport, New York, 14450. The property is now or formerly owned by Paul Monachino and zoned business non-retail BNR. Application number 24P-0004, SBL 140.01-2-61. Okay, hello Larry. Hello. Well, and now that I know we're in a worldwide audience, I'm glad I wore uh, one of my new suits. Absolutely. <laughs> You never know when there's a you never know agent um, watching or something. All right. Well, this is <laughs> this is pretty straightforward. And, and, and sitting here is, is Dr. Vanessa Komarek, um, and her, her husband's out in the atrium with her, her, her little little guy, little son. But um, fairly straightforward. Um, this is a split level home. It was owned by the Monachinos, and I believe Cindy Monachino was in my class of 73. <coughs> we just had our 50th reunion, but she was, uh, she was not there. Anyway, uh, we need to move the, um, the entrance off 250 north about nine feet to align with a 24-foot wide um, access, and then um, there would be three spots on the south, one of them being handicapped closest to the existing garage. The garage entrance will be the handicapped entrance, which is at grade. Um, there'll be another four spots here. Part of the town comments was that there was a zoning resolution back in 2011 for rear access, similar to what you have up at the Daniel Penfield house. So at such time that all this happens up here, it's been 13 years since that resolution. Then this access will be here. This front will go away. 
a sidewalk will be constructed because there'll be a, a sidewalk here. And um, we're going to rebuild the front walk because it's, it's basically a mess. The front steps are a mess falling apart. Um, to go to, through the comments quickly so they're entered on the record, I did speak with Zach Starkey at uh, DOT yesterday. So after we have a contractor, the contractor submits his insurance to the DOT and we pull a, um, a non-utility permit for the work in the right of way. Um, as I noted, the south portion of the driveway will be removed in phase one, and we show the five-foot sidewalk, and we've eliminated the double stack parking that we originally had. We revised the graphics to make it easier to read. The site data of the zoning code has been added, so I can go through that. The overall site is 6.33 acres, so it's under an acre with regards to uh, SWIP. Um, Max building height is 40 feet. We're probably 15 feet based on it's a 24 foot deep house with a uh, 412 roof pitch. And um, our front setback required is 50. We are 48.9. That's the way it was built. Uh, so it's an existing non-conforming. South and north side setbacks are required at 20. We are 14.7 and 13.9. Again, existing non-conforming. The rear is 30, which is way back here. We're 181 feet from the rear line. Um, on the coverage, we have to be less than 65%. Currently, we're at 12.95. Proposed with phase one would be 17.54. <clears throat> and with phase two, it would be 35%, way less than 65. The impervious area, uh, under the existing is 0 0.08 acres. It'll go up with the front parking to 0 0.11, and the proposed uh, phase two would be 0 0.22. Green space has to be greater than 35%. Currently, we are at 87% green. We'll, phase one will take us to 82%, and phase two will take us to just under 65% green. Again, significantly above the 35 required. Disturbance, uh, phase one is 0 0.07 acres, and phase two would be 0 0.17 acres. So disturbance is way under anything that SWIP would require. We do show the, um, the phase one silt fence stone chuck dam, and we do show double row here for the future. When I spoke with Doug about this, this was kind of giving <coughs> A future engineer, a roadmap of thoughts. The one thing on the grading, um, this is a 5% slope, 5, 5.5. You really don't want parking lots steeper than that, especially longitudinally, because if you're parked in a car on more than a 5% slope, when you open the passenger door, you fall out. And if you open the driver's door, you're like cl cl climbing out of a submarine hatch. So you try to keep your parking lots 5% or less. You also want to make them like a cookie tray, so it pitches like this and it pitches like that because that's the way pavers work, not all over the place. Um, topsoil will be removed from the site. There's no reason to keep it there. Uh, I noted the existing landscaping, which is used in the hollies, and uh, some burning bushes, which are invasive, so I noted those to be removed. Uh, we do show the 75-foot stream uh, EPOD, and area disturbances are noted. Um, we do show the concept rear. We didn't extend it out, but if that was extended out, the total slope would come out to the edge of the buffer. <coughs> it would be about four feet of fill, and then taper at a one-on-three slope. So it's, it's all doable, but if this gets pushed to the back because somebody over here wants to do something more aggressive, then this would move to the back because of the access lane, and then this could always be expanded. It would make a longer travel distance for a handicapped person, but um, I don't think uh, whenever that happens, I'll be around. So uh, if I'm around, give me a call. Anyway, the Monroe County planning comments about um, signage and uh, places to rest and they really more apply to buildings, so uh, I've already written the transmittal letter. I'll send them down to the uh, upstate chapter of uh, 
American Institute of Architects and uh, Community Design Center, and we note the recommendation for future EV charging. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, thank you. A couple questions that I have. Um, upon the event that phase two happens, 20 years, 10 years, we don't know. Um, would the applicant remove the current proposed yes. parking lot? Yeah, and front, turn front it into, parking would go, go away. away. It would be green, and the only thing would be from this sidewalk into the door sure, to the a walk, garage. Sure, a sidewalk or... Um, would, would in come a driveway. in here because that would still be a handicapped entrance from the sidewalk. When you're at that point, you could then go up the walk and steps into the front door. Okay. So that would be <clears throat> right there. And then the other question is, what's the um, what's the business it's uh, using? What describe the operation? Is if you do, you, if you could actually come up and uh, maybe. Uh, you can use whichever microphone you'd like, but introduce yourself and give us your um, name and address, social security number, <laughs> credit card info, all that, for the record. <laughs> okay, you don't, I, for the record, you don't have to give us all that, but. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> My name is Vanessa Komrak, um, the owner of uh, Meaningful Life Psychological Services. So it's a very small um, psychology practice um, where we offer individual and group therapy. Um, so that's the the purpose of the business. Okay. And did you just purchase the property? Yeah. Okay. It closed just about a week ago. All right. So you're not operating out of it yet. Correct. Yeah. You are. No, we're not. You, okay. Okay. It sounds uh, like an exciting plan. Any other yeah. questions? Her, her current offices are at 625 Panorama Trail. Yeah. I think that's where my dentist is. Probably. <laughs> All right. So just I got a couple quick ones. Uh, one doctor in that office, yourself? Um, yep. And then I have um, a couple of other psychologists as well that, that work there and see clients. Okay. So three mm -hmm. will be having their appointments there, correct? Yep. At any one time. Yep. And then how many, well, uh, uh, probably for parking, you should have more than enough parking, correct? Yeah. The only issue is um, we need to offer group therapy where we will typically have like, you know, group eight sessions. to ten people at a time. Okay. So there's that factor. And you should have enough parking with what you're Hopefully. Larry yeah. said, right? Okay, you need any variances or anything for Larry? Um, Doug, variances? Uh, I don't believe so off the face of it. Um, uh, Pre-existing non-conformings, we could always clean that up in through the zoning <coughs> board, have them, since they were modified from when the building was originally introduced, um, mm -hmm. I'll have to see if those are actually necessary. Um, other than that, I don't believe any variances are required. Yeah, from my experience, pre-existing non-conforming, that's the end of it. Good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only, just one little note of, um, on the on the plan here, where it lists the pre-existing non-conforming, you are conforming in the rear setback. So yes, um, it says existing non-conforming. So you probably just oh, delete all right, that, delete was a that cut part. Cut and paste at, at two ten in the morning. I, Not, my, just, my, 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 my cat grabbed. Just grabbed wanted to point it out. She, she's she's <laughs> now a grandma of five girls. All right. So. And one other question. Yeah. Are you done. Yeah, I'm good. I just, uh, Larry, or Mike, uh, uh, water runoff down the back. I don't know what's behind that particular location. Well, there's an existing creek that creek. we... So they should pick it all up? Yeah. Yeah. And then it, it goes into Parrington. That, that's, uh, I think, a tributary to Thomas Creek. Okay. Yes. Down in uh, Parrington, East Rochester. Hmm. Okay. So okay. you'll have all that additional asphalt. Don't yeah, it's not enough that it meets our code requirement. Okay. If they did an additional 6,000 square feet, then they would have to provide water quality, but it's below that, so. Perfect. <coughs> good. I'm good. Thank you. Bob? Yeah, I had just one question. Um, 
No issues with um, providing an interconnection in the future if it's deemed necessary with adjacent properties? That's for Vanessa to answer. Um, are you referring to phase two? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, if, that, if, if that's a requirement, then we'll okay. comply. Okay, thank you. Just note that if, I believe the property to the north, you had a proposal come in, according to Doug, and that was one of my clients, Chris Calabrese. And a Doug few years ago. That whatever they wanted to do was pretty aggressive for the site. Mm -hmm. So when I hear aggressive, if it's holding to the 80 foot setback and it's a pretty big building, that means the parking behind is going to be way down here. Right. So, you know, at that time, if the parking is going to connect over here, and this is where the parking lot's going to be, then Vanessa then maybe expands the building and gets some more tenants because, you know, the, the card game has changed. I mean, you can't. I can't connect from here. <coughs> the, wants to connect over there. The front setback would be right. 50 feet for that area. Um, it was something that was included as part of the rezoning. Okay. The intention was to bring any future buildings closer to the road and provide rear access. Right. Um, yeah. So a lot of it will depend on what comes in right. um, in the future. Yeah, and there's no way for us to. Yeah. I mean that. We we're going to do the best we can to try to accommodate and facilitate access right. um, behind, and so easements that may move, mm -hmm. um, but we can't. No, right. you know, we don't have a crystal ball. So I just, you know, I just set the parking ten feet off the structure, which is fire code. I show. 32 30, 30 foot runs of handicapped ramp which can raise you five feet which is more than we need but obviously if you know where the parking connects is going to drive how the design in the back works right okay uh, I'd like to open it up to the audience uh, is there anybody here that would like to comment on this application Okay, let me see uh, those of you watching from home and afar. Uh, I'll give you the reminder telephone number 585-340-8771. And you can also submit something electronically um, either right now or over the next couple of days at penfield.org. And it doesn't look like we have any, any callers tonight. So I don't get to play Larry King, but uh, any other final comments or questions? Good, thank you. Nope. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, and um, um, this will be tabled tonight, uh, pending preparation of additional paperwork and stuff. All right, thank you very much. When would we get a decision, roughly two weeks? Ten days? Uh, probably that's likely, unless there's some uh, outstanding okay. request for information mm -hmm. that uh, we haven't received back. Um, so the next meeting's on uh, March 28th. <coughs> Maybe two weeks from tonight. Yep. yep. Yeah, work session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming, and we will call this hearing closed. Okay. Um. Are there any deal breakers that the staff uh, well, is? Well, I want to go through it. I haven't had much of an opportunity to review the revised plan with the revised parking layout, so yep. I want to go through that, and make sure everything looks like it's compliant. Yep. If everything's compliant, I don't foresee any major deal breakers. Um, we appreciate them showing the phase two, um, you know, going through the history of the property when it was rezoned. The ultimate intention is to bring 
access out to across from New Wickham and through the plaza where Doodlebugs, Jeremiah's, all that is, right. to provide for safer access out onto 250. Um, then the a bunch of additional uh, additional curb cuts on on 250. Um, so at this point, uh, I'd like staff would like an opportunity to review the revised plan. I would agree. Um, just to make sure everything applies and there aren't any necessary variances. So are you guys comfortable with us starting starting, starting a draft approval? Sure, sure. Should we could at least, uh, if all that works out, then take care of it at the next meeting. Yeah, the next meeting. Yeah. And if not, then we'll. I'm just wondering about cleaning up the setbacks and getting variances. That's the end. I don't foresee the, necess the necessity of doing variances for the pre-existing non-conforming. I mean, realistically, we made them non-conforming by rezoning the property to a different zoning <coughs> classification that has a higher um, setback calculation. Uh, when this was zoned R120, it complied with all of those setbacks. Um, and since she's not making any changes to the structure, or moving the structure, making it any less compliant. Um, but yeah. this would be the time to clean it up, I would think. Yeah. I wouldn't think you would. You don't need to do it because it's pre-existing not okay. conforming. So that's. I just figured that way. If you clean up the setback so that it meets what that's out there, then they don't ever have to come back for if they do any building modifications. I mean, they might be doing internal building modifications that we don't know about. I think with the exterior. Yeah, but, any but ex you, you, it, when you say, I mean, if they were to go further back. Well, I'm just saying, are they going to try to go wider? Are they going to try to go closer to the road? Because they're already less than the 50-foot well, setback. E either of those would require a variance. Yeah, or, I think, I think yeah. we would bridge the variance when that, yeah. that time comes. Or, or there's our code is a little quirky. But I just know, yeah. let's say a new homeowner builds a house, and unfortunately it's less than the front setback they tend to go back to the that, zoning board. That's because when they build that house, that's not in conformance with the zoning, mm -hmm. and they need a variance before you can give them a building permit. I just, a, yeah, I just, I don't, your, yeah, your I would, answer's I, fine. I just want to know, make sure that we do our due diligence. Yeah, and, I don't think you need it for this type of scenario because you don't know what they might try to do in the future. And if they come in and do it in the future, then you can give them whatever relief they need. Right. The zoning board can do that. And then, well, if they go to phase two, they're going to have to have a stormwater facility or something. So mm -hmm. that will so kick in. The only other variance they may need, and I need to look at the numbers, go th through the numbers, is on parking. Um, so they are in a district with an overlay that allows for a 20% reduction from um, the required parking, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I think the required parking was 12 spaces. Um, so they're showing, they're showing less than they were in their original one because they removed the double stack. Seven? Seven. I think it's seven now. One, two, so I think eight w had them, I think they were pretty close. But given that they're looking at, or we can approve of, you know, as part of it, the phase two of parking, um, you know, whether we consider that as land banked, um, we've traditionally looked at that as being approvable under the parking reduction uh, in our code. So I well, want to crunch said there's, Excuse me, they got three doctors working yep. out of there. They do therapy sessions with at least 10 people whenever. So, so do, does she have enough parking for that? So does she have enough parking for that? Exactly. Um, That's why and they could go back. They were previously showing double stacked parking along the front. The idea would be that the doctors would park in the, the double stack and then clients so could the, park behind them. The so they wouldn't lot have would extend further to the north, the parking lot, and those four north Well, right, so the original plan had the double parking right there. <clears throat> Right. And oh, yeah. we've never in the town have approved that, but that doesn't mean it's just not a good yeah. idea because. Yeah. Why, yeah, why do that? Where's that? Hmm. I, I, th I think this is a. You know, on the one hand, the I, I understand the concept behind the double stack for what their particular use is. Mm -hmm. Yet, at the same time, I understand the well. It might not always be this use, and um, 
how do you accommodate someone to, you know, this to me looks like no big deal, but geez, uh, got a better offer and we moved to Atlanta and now this is for sale and it, somebody else picks it up and now all of a sudden there's these mm -hmm. double stack parking spots. That said, you know, you see plenty of churches and other places that have those types of arrangements. I, I'm not sure where I come down on that right now. Well, we should probably try to figure out the Yeah, I'll take a look and see if they need a, need a variance because this is one less, I believe this is one less space than what they originally but proposed. But the double stack, when you look at the double stack versus what they do, because mm -hmm. they had nine here and then they go eight, it's because when they get on the revised plan, they're coming further into the... Um, right, they're coming closer to the, to the road, which theoretically, you know, we would like to see the sidewalk through there, but... So again. there's an existing sidewalk easement. Uh, one of the comments from the county was to take a look at the sidewalk. There's no... The sidewalk currently ends... Like two lots Two or north. three lots north. Um, so there wouldn't be any additional sidewalk until those lots develop out anyway right. when they develop out she'll have to do the rear access parking and at that point we can um, require that sidewalks go in hmm. okay well, so just get a table in anyway still yeah I, i'd say let's at least get something started mm -hmm. and uh let's try to figure out what the best thing to do is over the next Right, we just got these plans today, yeah. so I haven't even. <laughs> I, I mean, I just yep. got this physical copy at the beginning yeah. of the meeting. I got so, digital copy. I, I, you might want to ask them to clarify how the parking proposed is going to work with their operations, given that they said I, they're going to have these group sessions with eight patients. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah, you know. that should be in our tabling resolution that like we have that? that. Any other concerns? Okay. Somebody want to move to table it, send a letter? Sure. <clears throat> I'll move that we table and uh, send a letter per our discussion. Tiding second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. It's to Any other? Table it. To table it, correct? Table it. Yes, yes. Table yes. The condition. Yeah, for you guys to have time to look at it or whatever, let us know if right. it's going to go any further, I guess. In the right. Next meeting. Anything else that we need to discuss tonight on our agenda? That's all I had for you guys tonight. Okay. That being said, we will adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Have a great couple of weeks, and we'll see you on the 28th. <laughs>